Hi, hello, how are you? We're ready for a little bit more of Wintersmith, written by Terry Pratchett, book three of the Tiffany Aiken series. Last time we were here, we re reintroduced ourselves to the Nakmak Fiegel. They were with Miss Treason, and we found out that the that Wintersmith, no, I keep calling him the Wintersmith, we found out that Wintersmith was looking for Tiffany. And if you remember at the end of that chapter two, Tiffany woke up, didn't she? We're now at the start of chapter three called The Secret of Boffo. Now, tragedy has struck a little bit. I've forgotten Miss Treason's voice. I only did it last night. And now I've forgotten Miss Treason's voice. She put on a Scottish accent for a little while so that the, that she could talk to the Feagles. And now I've forgotten it. I remember this kind of a screechy high, like a, like a stereotypical witch's voice I gave her. If it sounds different to the other parts I've read, just ignore it. You'll know if it's Miss Treason talking or not. Anyway, let's get on, shall we? It's not good being a sandwich of bewildered dancers. They were heavy men. Tiffany was aching all over. <laughs> nice. She was covered in bruises, including one the shape of a boot that she wasn't going to show to anyone. Feagles filled every flat surface in Miss Treason's weaving room. She was working at her loom with her back to the room because she said that this helped her think, but since this was Miss Treason, this didn't matter much. There were plenty of eyes and ears that she could use after all. The fire burned hot and there were candles everywhere. Black candles, of course. Tiffany was angry. Miss Treason hadn't shouted, hadn't even raised her voice. She just sighed and said, Foolish child! Which was a whole lot worse, mostly because that's just what Tiffany knew she'd been. One of the dancers had helped bring her back to the cottage. She couldn't remember anything about that at all. A witch didn't do things because they seemed a good idea at the time. That was practically cackling. You had to deal every day with people who were foolish and lazy and untruthful and downright unpleasant. And you could certainly end up thinking that the world would be considerably improved if you gave them a slap. But you didn't because, as Miss Tick had once explained, A. It would only make the world a better place for a very short time. B. It would then make the world a slightly worse place. And C. You're not supposed to be as stupid as they are. Her feet had moved and she'd listened to them. She ought to have been listening to her head. Now she had to sit by Miss Treason's fire with a tin hot water bottle on her lap and a shawl around her. So, the wintersmith is a kind of god, she said. Eh, that kind of thing, yes, said Billy Bigchin. But not the praying to kind of god. He just, he just makes winters. It's his job, you can. He's an elemental said Miss Treason from her loom. Aye, said Rob anybody. Gods, elementals, demons, spirits. Sometimes it's hard to tell them apart without a map. And the dance is done to welcome winter, said Tiffany. That doesn't make sense. The Morris dance is to welcome the coming of the summer. Yes, that's... Are you an infant? said Miss Treason. The year is round. The wheel of the world must spin. That is why they come up here. They dance the dark Morris to balance it. They welcome the winter because of the new summer deep inside it. Clack, clack went the loom. Miss Treason was weaving a new cloth of brown wool. Well, all right, said Tiffany. We welcomed it. Him. That doesn't mean he's supposed to come looking for me. Why did you join the dance? Miss Treason demanded. Uh, there was a space and... Yes, a space. A space not intended for you. Not for you, foolish child. You danced with him and now he wants to meet such a bold girl. I have never heard of such a thing. I want you to fetch the third book from the right on the second shelf from the top of my bookcase. She handed Tiffany a heavy black key. Can you manage to even do that? Witches didn't need a slap to slap the stupid, not when they had a sharp tongue that was always ready. Miss Treason also had several books of sh shelves of books, which was unusual for one of the older witches. It was high up. The books looked big and heavy, and up until now, Miss Treason had forbidden Tiffany to dust them, let alone unlock the big black iron band that secured them to the shelf. 
People who came here always gave them a nervous book. <laughs> a nervous look. Books were dangerous. Tiffany unlocked the bands and wiped away the dust. Ah, the books were like Miss Treason, not everything they seemed. They looked like magic books, but they had names like an encyclopedia of soup. There was a dictionary. Next to it, the book Miss Treason had asked for was covered in cobwebs. Still blushing with shame and anger, she got the book down, fighting to get it free of the webs. Some of them went boom as they snapped, and dust fell off the top of the pages. When she opened it, it smelled old and parchmenty, like Miss Treason. The title, in gold lettering that had almost rubbed away, was Chaffinch's Ancient and Classical Mythology. It was full of bookmarks. Pages 18 and 19, said Miss Treason, her head not moving. Tiffany turned to them. The Dance of the Sneezers, he said. She said, is that meant to be the Dance of the Seasons? Regrettably, the artist Don Vizen de Yo-Yo, whose famous masterpiece that was, did not have the same talent with letters as he had with painting, said Miss Treason. They worried him for some reason. I notice you mention the words before the pictures. You are a bookish child. The pictures were strange. They showed two figures. Tiffany hadn't seen fancy dress. There wasn't the money at home for that sort of thing, but she'd read about it and this was pretty much what she'd imagined. The page showed a man and a woman, or at least things that looked like a man and a woman. The woman was labelled Summer and was tall and blonde and beautiful and therefore, to the short brown-haired Tiffany, a figure of immediate distrust. She was carrying what looked like a big basket shaped like a shell or horn, which was full of fruit. The man, Winter, was old and bent and grey. Icicles glittered on his beard. Ah, that's what their winter smith would look like, sure enough, said Rob Anybody, strolling across the page. All frosty. Him, said Tiffany, that's the winter smith. He looks a hundred years old. Oh, a youngster, is he? said Miss Treason nastily. Dinny let him kiss ye, or your nose might turn blue and fall off, said Daft Woolly cheerfully. Daft Woolly, don't you dare say things like that, said Tiffany. I was just trying to lighten the mood, you can, said Woolly, looking sheepish. That is an artist's impression, of course, said Miss Treason. But what does it mean, said Tiffany, staring at the picture. It was wrong and she knew it. This wasn't what he was like at all. It means he made it up said Billy Big Chin. He wouldn't have seen him. No, would he? he? No one's seen a wintersmith ever. Yet, said the daft Woolly. Woolly, said Rob Anybody, turning to his brother. You ken I told you about making tactful remarks. Aye, Rob, I ken well, said Woolly obediently. What you just said was not one of them, said Rob. Woolly hung his head. Sorry, Rob. Tiffany clenched her fists. I didn't mean all of this to happen. Miss Treason turned her chair and removed her grey bandage with some solemn solemnity. Then what did you mean? Will you tell me? Did you dance out of youth's inclination to disobey old age? To mean is to think. Did you think at all? Others have joined in the dance before now. Children, drunkards, youths for a silly bet. Nothing happened. The spring and autumn dances are... Just an old tradition, most people would say. Just a way of marking when the ice and fire exchange their dominion over the world. Some of us think we know better. We think something happens. For you, the dance became real and something has happened. And now the wintersmith is seeking you. Why? Tiffany managed. I don't know. When you were dancing, did you see anything? Did you hear anything? How could you describe the feeling of being everywhere and everything, Tiffany wondered. She didn't even try. I... I thought I heard a voice, or maybe two voices, she mumbled. Um, they asked me who I was. Interesting, said Miss Treason. Two voices. I will consider the implications. What I can't understand is how he found you. I will think about that. In the meantime, I expect it would be good idea to wear warm clothing. Aye, said Rob Anybody. The wintersmith can he abide the heat. Oh, I'd be forgetting me head next. 
We brought a wee letter from that hollow tree down in the forest. Get to the big wee hag, Wooly. We picked it up on the way past. A letter, said Tiffany, as the loon clacked behind her and daft Wooly began to pull up a grubby rolled up envelope from his spog. It's from that wee heap of jobbies at the castle back home, Rob went on, as his brother hauled. He says he bides, fi- he bides fine and hopes ye do likewise, and he's looking forward to ye being back home soon, and there's lots of stuff about how the sheeps are doing and such like, not very interesting in my opinion, and he's written sw on the bottom, but we haven't worked out what that code means yet. You read my letter, said Tiffany in horror. Oh, aye, said Rob with pride. No problem. Billy Big Chin here gave me a wee hint and some of the longer words, but it was mostly me, aye. He beamed, but the face, the grin faded as he watched Tiffany's expression. Ah, I ken you're a wee bitty upset that we opened yon envelope thingy, he explained, but this is okay, because we glued it up again we a slug. You wouldn't ever know it had been red. He coughed because Tiffany was still glaring at him. All women were a bit scary to the feagles, and witches were the worst. At last, when he was really nervous, Tiffany said, How did you know where the letter would be? She glanced sideways at Daft Woolly. He was chewing the edge of his kilt. He only ever did this when he was frightened. Uh, would ye accept a wee bitty lie here? Rob said. No! It's interesting. There's dragons and there's unicorns in it. No, I want the truth. Ah, it's so boring. <sighs> we go to the Baron's castle and read the letters that you send him. And you said the postman knows to leave letters to you in the hollow tree by the waterfall, said Rob. If the wintersmith had got into the cottage, the air couldn't have got any colder. He keeps the letters from ye in a box under his... Rob began and then shut his eyes as Tiffany's patience parted with a twang even louder than mysteries and strange cobwebs. Don't you know it's wrong to read other people's letters, she demanded. Uh, Rob anybody began. And you broke into the Baron's cast. Ah, no, 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 said Rob, jumping up and down. You can he get us on that one. We just walked in through one of them little wee slits for the firing of the arrows. And then you read my personal letters sent personally to Roland, said Tiffany. They were personal. <laughs> Lots of explosives there. It's plosives. <laughs> oh, aye, said Rob anybody. But didn't he fesh yourself? We'll ne tell anyone what was in them, you know. We'll never tell a soul what's in your diary after all either, said Do- Daft Willie. Not even the bits with the flowers that you draw around them. Miss Treason is grinning to herself behind me, thought Tiffany. I just know she is. But she'd run out of nasty tones of voice. He did that after talking to the Feagles for any length of time. You were their Kelder, her second thoughts reminded her. They think you have a sol- they have a solemn duty to protect you. It doesn't matter what you think. They're going to make your life so complicated. Don't read my letters, she said. And don't read my diary either. OK, said Rob, anybody. Promise? Oh, aye. But you promised last time. Oh, aye. Cross your heart and hope to die. Oh, aye. No problemo. And that's the promise of an untrustworthy lion stealing. Fe- and that's the promise of an untrustworthy lion stealing feagle, is it? Said Miss Treason. Because you believe you're dead already, do you not? That's what people think, right? Oh, aye, mistress, said Rob Anybody. Thank you for drawing my attention to that. In fact, Rob Anybody, you have no intention of keeping any promise at all. Oh, aye, mistress, said Rob proudly. No, not poor, <laughs> not poor wee pro- weak promises like that. Because, you see, tis our solemn destiny to guard the big wee hag. We must lay down our lives for her if that comes to it. How can you do that when you are dead already? Said Miss Treason sharply. Sharply. <laughs> sharply. <laughs> That's a bit of a puzzler, right enough, said Rob. So probably we'll lay down the lives of any scunners who do wrong by her. Tiffany gave up and sighed. I'm almost 13. I can look after myself. Oh, hark at Miss Self-Reliant, said Miss Treason, but not in a particularly nasty way. Against the Wintersmith, is that? But what does he want, 
said Tiffany. I told you, perhaps he wants to find out what kind of girl was so forward as to dance with him, said Miss Treason. But it was my feet, I didn't mean to. Miss Treason turned round in her chair. How many eyes is she using? Tiffany's second thoughts wondered that. The feagle's eyes, the ravens, the mice, all of them. How many of me is she seeing? Is she using the insects with dozens of glittery eyes? Oh, that's all right then, said Miss Treason. Once again, you didn't mean it. A witch takes responsibility. Have you learned nothing, child? Child. That was a terrible thing to say to anyone who was almost 13. Tiffany felt herself going red again. The horrible hotness spread inside her head. That's why she walked across the room, opened the front door and stepped outside. A fluffy snow was falling. Uh-oh. Very gently, when Tiffany looked into the pale grey sky, she saw the flakes drifting down in soft, feathery clusters. It was the kind of snow that people back home on the chalk called Granny Aching Shearing Her Sheep. Tiffany felt them melting on her hair as she walked away from the cottage. Miss Treason is shouting from the doorway, but she walked on, letting the melting snow cool her blushes. Of course this is stupid, she told herself, but being a witch is stupid. Why do we do it? It's hard work for not much reward. What's a good day for Miss Treason when someone brings her a second-hand pair of old boots that fit properly? What does she know anything about anything? Where is this Wintersmith then? Is he here? I've only got Miss Treason's word for it. That and a made-up picture in a book. Wintersmith! She shouted. You could hear the snow falling. It made a strange little noise like a faint cold sizzle. Wintersmith! There was no reply. Well, what had she expected? A big, booming voice? Mr. Spiky, the icicle man? There was nothing but the softness of white snow falling patiently among dark trees. She felt a bit silly now, but satisfied as well. This was what a witch did. She had faced what she was afraid of, and then it held no more fear. She was good at this. She turned around and saw the wintersmith. <gasps> Whoa, we'll stop it there for tonight. My Goodness. Face to face with the wintersmith. What do you reckon's going to happen? Is he the old man who was in that illustration that she saw? Or is he something else? What's he going to do? Just talk to her? Say, all right, just wanted to do you were. See you later. Or maybe more. <laughs> all right, we'll see you tomorrow.